I'm back and so the next thing that was in the notes was on how to do a trajectory problem. So that would be like if you have a car or a, let's say it's a bowl and the bowl rolls off a table. So what you know is that the bowl has a initial speed going in this direction. So let's say that it's going at two meters per second. And then you should also know what the height of the table is. So let's just say for the sake of argument that the height of the table, so I'm gonna say Z, because Z normally means up and down, is equal to one meter. And then the question is, where does the ball land? So the ball is gonna go off the table and then it's gonna fall somewhere over here and let's just say it falls at X away from the table. So the problem would be, how do you calculate where does the ball land? So this is an example of a trajectory because notice it's traveling sideways and it's traveling up and down at the same time. And so what I've got here is there's the equations of motion for something that's traveling sideways and then next to it is the equations of motion if something is moving up and down. Well the good news is this is not going to be on the exam so we're not going to do any trajectories but I did want to mention how do you do it and so if we go to our next thing here we have the table and we have the ball and it's going off the table. Well, the cool thing about it is that if you took the ball, and let's say you put the ball right here. Now, let's say that you just take a stationary ball and you drop it, then that ball is gonna fall straight down and it's gonna take a certain amount of time, T, for it to hit the floor. And if you do this experiment where you've got this ball that is traveling at two meters per second, and so at the instant that the ball gets to the edge of the table, click your stopwatch, okay? What you would find is that the amount of time that it takes to do this is also going to be the letter T. So the amount of time that it takes to fall straight down is the same amount of time it's gonna to take to go in this direction and it's also the same amount of time that it's gonna to take to get over to here. So if I was to draw a dotted line there. So time is the connector. So that if you're solving a problem like this, uh, what you can do is you can combine the equations for horizontal motion and vertical motion and you can stick them together by solving each one of them for the letter T and then putting them together. Now we're not going to do that but it, you can find this on the internet if you want to solve a problem like this. It's not really that difficult but you're not going to do that on the exam. And so that leaves us with our last topic that you need to know for this particular lesson, and that is how to make graphs. Okay, so excuse me while I erase here. Have a cup of coffee. Answer your emails while I'm doing this. There should be some music while I'm doing this. Okay, all right. Now, there's two kinds of graphs that you're gonna need to know for the exam. So you need to be able to analyze a graph that is going to be distance versus time and then you should also be able to analyze a velocity 
versus time graph. So velocity versus time, and then distance versus time. All right, now you also need to know a little bit about geometry. And so you should know that the equation of a straight line, so let's make a straight line here. The equation of that straight line is going to be y is equal to mx plus b. Okay, so what do I mean? Okay, so if I go over to here, the b is going to be this distance right there. So that's the slope intercept one. So that's there. Okay, then the m is going to be the slope. So m is going to be rise over run. So you need to have two points in order to calculate the slope. And so let's say that I've got this point right here, and I've got this point right here. So then if I jump, go down to here, and I go down to here, and then I go over to here, and I go over to here, okay, the rise is the up and down part. So that I would take whatever this number here is, and I subtract that number there, then that's what goes on the top. The run is going to be sideways. You run sideways. And so again, you're going to take whatever this number here is, and then subtract that number, and then that's go and then divide those two numbers, and then you end up with the slope of that particular line. So that's the definition of a straight line, and then the definition of what the B is, and then the M is. Now, what's the Y? So the Y is in the up and down direction, and then the X is in the sideways direction. So now, let's use this to analyze these two different kinds of situations. So we got the distance versus time graph, the velocity versus time graph, what do they mean? Well, any time that you see a straight line, something is constant. Something is not changing whenever you have a straight line. Now, whenever you have a curved line, that's a different story. So a curving line means that something is changing. When it's a straight line, then something is not changing. So let's do some, what do we mean by some um, examples of straight lines? Okay, so let's start out, so let me erase some of this. And let's first analyze what does a sideways so what does a sideways line on a distance versus time graph, what does it mean? Okay, it means something is constant. And uh, let's say that this is three meters. So that's where it's gonna start at. So when we click our stopwatch, an object is three meters away from us. Then, let's say at the end of one second, well, it's still three meters away from you. At the end of two seconds, it's still three meters away from you. So how would you describe that? It's not moving. So whenever the, you have a line that's going sideways on a distance versus time graph, then that means it's basically not moving at all. It's just sitting there. Now, what about, oh, and then by the way, what's the slope of this line? So the slope is gonna be the rise over the run. Now the, the run is changing. So the number on the bottom is changing, but what's the rise doing? It's not doing anything. So the rise, the change in the up and down part would be zero 
and zero divided by anything is going to be zero. So this thing has a slope of zero if it's sideways. Okay, now what about though if it is something like this where it's angling upwards? Now something is still constant, but notice it's not going to be zero. So now we're going to have a non zero slope. So what's the significance of, of the slope? Okay, slope is rise over run. Okay, what's my rise? It's distance. So for this particular graph, the slope m is going to be distance. And then what's the run part? Well, that's the time. So it's going to be distance over time. But what is that? Distance over time is speed. So the slope of a distance versus time graph is going to be the velocity of the object. And so what did this represent? The slope was zero. So the velocity was zero, which makes sense because it was just sitting there. It wasn't moving. Okay, so that's what that one means. Uh, if it is sloping upwards, that's a positive slope, which means it has a positive velocity, which means that it's moving to the right, or if it is up and down motion, uh, it's moving uh, up. What about this? So what does it mean? if something is going down like that. Well, that's a negative slope, which means it's a negative speed, which means that it's traveling in that direction, or it could be traveling in this direction if it's in the up and down direction. Okay? And then, what does this mean? Okay, so when it's curving upwards, it's changing. And so this time, the velocity is not constant. So what was a changing velocity? A changing velocity was a acceleration. So if you see this line on a distance versus time graph, it means it's accelerating. Okay, so to summarize here, uh, any time that you got a straight line on a distance versus time graph, it means the velocity is constant. If you have a curving line, the velocity is changing and it's accelerating. Okay, now let's look, analyze this one over here. We're, we're going to do it exactly the same way. So we could start out with something that's a horizontal line like we did this one over here. So what's its significance? So let's do the whole slope thing again. Slope is going to be rise over run. Okay, but this time, m, what's the up and down part? So what's the rise? It's the velocity. This is a velocity versus time graph. So it's going to be the change in velocity over time. Time is going to be the run. So velocity over time. But what is that? What is velocity divided by time? Acceleration. So a straight line on a velocity versus time graph is the acceleration. And so if we look at, let's look at this one right here. What's the slope if it's horizontal? What was the slope when it was horizontal over here? It was zero because it's not changing up and down. So it'd be zero divided by t, which is zero. So this one is saying that acceleration is zero. But what does that mean? So if something is not accelerating, 
then the velocity is constant. And now let's take a look at what it's saying. It's saying that a certain object has a speed when you click your stopwatch. So here is the, the at t equals zero, that's when you click your stopwatch. And then let's say that it has a velocity of seven meters per second. Okay, now we wait one second later and we look at the speedometer. And look, it's still seven meters per second at one second. At two seconds, it's still seven meters per second. So notice that the speed is not changing. And if the speed isn't changing, so if the final minus the initial, so seven minus seven is zero, zero divided by t is zero, so the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, now what does this mean? So if you've got something that's sloping upwards, okay, now it's going to have a positive acceleration. So the acceleration is not going to be zero, but it's still going to be constant. So it's going to be going up at whatever that acceleration is. What does it mean if something is going down? that would be a negative acceleration. So whether you're talking about velocities or accelerations, when it's going up, it's a positive number. When it's going down, it's a negative. And then when it's sideways, it's going to be a zero. So uh, there could be a question on the exam where I give you the data, and then I ask you to make the graph. I could give you the graph and then it could have a line on there and I'll ask you to calculate the slope rise over run and then I could ask you to interpret what does it mean so the slope on a distance versus time graph is velocity and then the slope of a velocity versus time graph is going to be acceleration so that's a lot to digest. So you might want to watch this segment again just to make sure that you're getting it correct. Okay, so that wraps up this lesson. Okay, and so in my next series of lessons for the review for the unit exam, we're going to be talking about Newton's laws of motion. So I'll see you in just a moment.